What's up, y'all? This is a collab with Harmony S. Go subscribe to our channel. Her video link is in the description. What's up, y'all? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be giving you answer questions that most YouTubers do not want to answer for you. Subscribe if you want more videos like this and lifestyle content. How does this whole payment process even work for y'all? First off, let's talk the basics. You need to get 1,000 subscribers. It don't matter how long you take, you just need 1,000 subscribers. You also need to get 4,000 hours within a year. You have to keep that up every year or you get demonetized and not paying anymore until you get your 4,000 hours back within the next upcoming year. If you're under 18, you need a parent to be over your money and over your account. Or you can just get all your money sent to your parents' bank account. It's really up to you and your parents. With YouTube, it's not like every other job, you get paid once a month. So you get paid based off how many people are watching your ads. You need people to be watching the ads on your video. If they skip the ad, if you ever watch a YouTube video and you skip the ad, YouTuber you was watching didn't get paid for it. It really depends on what type of video you're making, how much you make. YouTube has this thing called CPM. They give you the amount of money you make for a thousand views that you get. You know how to get a high CPM, and here's how. You get high CPMs if you make videos talking about cars and edit numbers and stuff like that. As I am editing, I feel like I didn't give enough information talking about how to get a high CPM. So here's a resource that I got from the internet available and will tell you the truth on how to get a higher CPM. It's but you get a lower CPM if you're making lifestyle content, your resumes and stuff like that. YouTube, it all is all about how important the video is to society. YouTubers get paid per click. If you ever click on somebody's video, somebody get paid for that click. They get paid because you clicked their thumbnail. My next question is, how do this sponsorship thing even work for YouTubers? First off, you have to agree on how much you're getting paid for the video, the Instagram post, anything. And sponsorships sometimes, because sometimes they give you a list of talking points. You have to hit those talking points or you need to start over. Sponsorships tell you, you need to get this video up by a certain date. You need the video to get up there. Next point is, what makes a channel get demonetized? Demonetization is your strikes that YouTube gives you. Three strikes and you're out. Give you copyright strikes and it gives you channel strikes. Also, if you're getting paid and you don't reach that, if you all of a sudden don't have the 1,000 subscribers anymore, or you don't reach the 4,000 hours within that year, they also will demonetize you. The next one is, how do you actually grow on YouTube? Not all that be consistent stuff, but like, how do you really grow on YouTube? Because you already know them basics. You need a good thumbnail. Now, I know you heard this over and over again, People tell you this, but they never tell you why. You need a good thumbnail because YouTubers get paid based off the click. So if you get somebody to click on your thumbnail, YouTube will pay you because it was just that good. You need good watch retention. What is watch retention? Watch retention is how long somebody is watching your video. But what is good watch retention? Watch retention, a very good one, is like 70% or higher. But what you want to aim for is a 40% or higher. 40% might be bad at school, but when it comes to how long somebody's watching your video for, you need that 40%. Also, I know people are telling you, make your 10 minute long videos, 10 minute long videos, but also why you really need a 10 minute video is because you can play as many ads as you want to when you have a 10 minute video. But if you have a shorter video, let's say a five minute video, then it's most likely that you would have a higher watch retention and you just want to push your video out more because they know people like this video. You also need a good click-through rate. What is a click-through rate? Click-through rate is what percentage of people are clicking your videos. YouTube will put your videos out there a certain amount of time and that's the percentage of people who actually click them. For me, I have videos that put my video out there 6,000 times and there's like a 10% click-through rate. But what is a good click-through rate? A good click-through rate is the average 2 to 10%, which is a wide range. But I know generally my click-through rate is about 10%, which is good. YouTube also look at good engagement, which means people liking or disliking the videos, people commenting in the comment section, you hearted the comments, you replying to the comments. That is good engagement in the video on YouTube. Like, people really like this video. Let's push it up further, you know? I know I said we don't want that basic be consistent stuff, but you need to be consistent. And I'm not gonna go say be consistent. I'ma tell you why. You need to be consistent because YouTube likes channels with consistent. YouTube are looking is looking at how many times you post a week, a month, and so on. And they say, oh, this channel.
channel is posting well, let's push this out more. The reason why YouTube do this is because they want people on their website longer. Next thing is that you need to stop using that intro that you put in every video. Here is why. Unless your intro is important in some way, you need to stop it. Unless it's like two seconds intro. The reason because nobody cares. Nobody cares about that intro. It's not doing anything. All you're doing is shouting out your Instagram and showing pictures of yourself that nobody cares about. They care about the information that you're giving them, the entertainment that you're giving them, whatever that you're doing in that video. That's what they care about. I have analytics that reveal that I put my intros in. That was my dropping point. That is the point where people dropped out because they don't care. Stop putting my intro in. My watch retention came up. Next thing you need to do is get straight to the point. Your talk, when you talk, the first 15 seconds of a YouTube video is the most important. The first 15 seconds, you need to get to the point. And if you're not to the point, people are going to leave, and then YouTube going to like, um, nobody likes this. Bye. We're not putting you out there anymore because nobody cares. But if you really feel like you need to say what you need to say in the beginning of the video, then this is what you need to do. What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel, and I do have a few things to say, but if you want to see that, you can go to this timestamp. Give them a time step. Tell them to go here if you don't, if they don't care what you're saying. Next one is how to get collabs with other creators. I have done multiple collabs. This is asking a collab for somebody. It's okay to reach out to people. But what do you say? This is what you want to say in the message, the email, or what have way you contact me them. Hi, you put your channel name. I have just recently came across your channel and if you've been watching it for a while you say I've been watching your content for a while you say I really like your content I feel like our channels are alike in niches and you could say we have about the same sub count or we have about the same we get about the same views I would like to collab with you are you down and they were fine if they would like to they would ignore you if they don't want to or they would just simply tell you no and it's okay if you get a no there's plenty of channels for you to collab with that would love to collab with you but if you try to collab with somebody, make sure you get about the same amount of views with them. I really don't care about the subscriber count, but if I get about the same amount of views as them, then I feel like we'll do good for each other. Next one is, what cares more weight? Watch time, subscribers, or views? Watch time, hands down. Watch time carries the most weight down to your channel, because that's all you two care about. How long are they keeping people on my website, on my app? That's all they care about, honestly. The next one is, have supports ever been annoying? Yes, but not often. Anyways, how do you really feel about somebody rescheduling your collab? Well, I feel I feel like it kind of stresses me out, to be honest. Like, I have me, I'm a planner. And I also have a video coming out soon on how I plan on that video. So you might want to subscribe if you want to see that. I'm a planner and I always have things laid out. For me, I have my videos already planned out for the end, to the end of this year, December 31st or 30th, I don't know. But yeah, so it really stresses me out. I have to reschedule stuff and all that type stuff. Why do some of y'all clickbait? Well, I don't, personally, I don't clickbait. But I feel like it's not clickbait if you're actually giving the information that you say you're gonna give. Like, I'm answering questions that YouTubers don't like to answer. That's what I'm giving, that's what I'm doing, that's what I said. So I really don't know. This one is, why do some people bleep out every time they curse? Does it, is it against policy or is it bringing down money? It, it really, YouTube tells people that it really depends on how much you're cursing. If it's light, they don't really care. But if you're like cursing every few seconds, YouTube only, YouTube takes some of your money away. They only give you some of ass up on your video. They say, yeah, no. I curse and don't really do anything to a person's channel or video. What happens when you get copyrighted? The ads stay in your video, but the money is not going towards you. It's going to the owner of the music that you have used. What percentage of money does YouTube take from the creators? They take 45% and you keep 55%. I feel like it's fair because YouTube created this whole community. YouTube created this app. I feel like it's a fair deal because you're using their app for you to make money. So, fine by me. How do you feel about self one in the comments? It's really annoying. That's why I block out words. I block up subs, sub for sub, like, like all that type of stuff. So it's not somebody coming that. YouTube tells me somebody commented that and they didn't allow it. And then I um, report their comment as spam. Why don't YouTube talk about how much they get paid? It's honestly none of your business and none of your business. Like, YouTube is class for views or for fun. I feel like for me, it's 50-50, you know? 
I enjoy collabing with creators. It is so fun, and I get to meet them and talk to them and you know, get to know them. And also, I also like to grow my channel, so I collab with some creators, so I can get my channel out there. But it's the same thing with them. I put my audience on to them, you know? So it's like a 50-50 thing. If you have script shot videos, me personally, no, but I do outline my videos, which I will be talking about the video soon, so you might want to subscribe. So some do, but some don't, but I outline my videos. It's the end of today's videos. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. It's free. Don't forget to watch the videos coming up right now. Bye!